Good morning, everyone. I'm going to do another episode of Guided Cycles today on Bulls from the Bible. We'll wait for Daniel to get here, and we'll start uh, trying to help him with some, some form again. Good morning, Greg. Hey, Daniel. Ready to do some more repetitions? You betcha. Cool. Got my Remix out today, but I've got the firing pin out to keep from damaging it. Um, I've got that Desert Tech, but ironically, this is this and the 40X are the only conventional rifles I have. So this is going to work. I wanted to set up on a, on a conventional one this morning. Isn't it pretty? Yeah, who did that paint job? <laughs> Primal finish did. That, that phantom camo looks real good. <laughs> All right. I've already lined up on it. I've already got it on my proposed target. Tilt your camera up just a little bit. Put about the yeah. Put about the bottom bottom of it right at the bottom where you're shooting at it. There you go. That'll work. Are you making sure that you're in your respiratory pause when you make contact with the recoil pad? I am when I pull the trigger, but not when I make contact. You're right. That time you, you shifted right after you got on the gun. You were on the gun for a little bit, and then you then you shifted your non-firing shoulder. Were you just did you catch yourself and just start relaxing over there? Yeah, I I was tensed up. And yeah. I knew I was supposed to be, so I relaxed it. Yeah. So that's a that's a real good thing. Is if you're noticing things along the way, don't ever hesitate to stop, and you can do that from the position. So you don't have to stand up in order to get the tension out of your body. You can just kind of set yourself right in your head for a minute and just go through some breathing exercises or go through some uh, meditative technique to try to get that tension out of you. Your finger hit the boat when it's straight. Yes, yeah, so that's one of the things about the, the Rimax with the swept, anything with a swept handle that sticks down a fair bit like that is going to come in contact with it. So you just kind of kind of work around it. It's best to like not it. be in contact with it. So if you notice your, um, your first bone in your finger here is, it's tough to see with the camera angle, but you want to make sure that that's parallel with the center line of bore. It looks like you might be choked up on it a little bit, kind of pointing downward. Here? Yep. Okay. That right there is parallel. Okay. That uh, was so, a little high. Yep. Keep, keep that position. That'll help you stay away from it. It's not really a good idea to be touching the bolt when you fire. It'll, it'll, it will have a tendency to change the harmonic a little bit if you do that. So it's best to not touch it. And I know that's really hard with the Remax because it's right there. There it is again. <laughs> yeah. Got a quick prop it on that left shoulder. Well, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing to fight against because when you grab a hold of the rear bag, you have to understand that you don't need to hold yourself up with your elbow. You can, right. you can lay yourself flat. 
And I mean, in some situations, if you're in a, a compromised firing position, then of course there's some things that you might need to do. Using your bone support, getting your elbows propped up, that can be a useful tool. But in perfect practice, when you're just laying on a fully square setup on a nice flat spot, um, that's not a, an area where you, you need to compromise at all. Right. Need to change the, the camera angle in here? Yeah, yeah, we'll keep going as this for, for just a, another couple of cycles here. Okay. Well, it seems like you've kind of got back into the groove of, of deliberate movements. You're not really wasting much effort. Yeah. I like my desert tech, but this still feels better. Mm -hmm. It's It tends to be more natural, I feel like, more easier to just lay in the right spot automatically. Well, everything is just in the normal place that everybody's used to. You know, the desert right. techs, they... they there's a compromise there because you're getting such a short overall length package, which uh, comes in extremely handy, but there's, there's no substitute for a big giant, long, super heavy traditional rifle. They just, <laughs> they just run real, real smooth. <laughs> right. Be careful not to anticipate the natural respiratory pause. Okay. It's difficult to see, obviously, because of, I can only have a limited amount of view here. But it looks like you're, as soon as you come into the respiratory pause, you're breaking the shot. And right. you want to make sure that you're allowing that impulse to fire has to come from within. And so don't get in the habit of thinking that just because you laid down, you, you need to fire the rifle as quickly as possible now. You should be breathing through those cycles, watching the natural frame of motion of your reticle in relation to the target, if there is any, your breathing may induce that, your heartbeat may induce that, and you should be searching and, and kind of embracing the work that you've done to create such a good position and kind of relish that for just a second and then blank your mind be observing through the reticle, be conscious of your breath, make sure that you're breathing naturally, don't molest your breathing cycle, and let that settle in and fully embrace the fact that you're not the one that's going to decide when to break that shot. Your conscious mind needs to not be the thing that's making that happen. Your subconscious mind needs to do it, and you need to be looking for that impulse, that feeling to do it. Almost need a set in a hallway at minimum with a target. It's hard when I'm looking at a brown couch. Yeah, it's it's best if you can have something where you can actually be parallax free and have a nice small fixed aim point. That's difficult. They make those training devices that uh, IOTA, I think it's called. Um, it's this little lens that you stick on the end of your rifle scope. And that'll allow you to be parallax free and in focus at an extremely close distance. If it's like 10 feet or something like that, or 10 yards, I forget what it is exactly. I think it's very close. Um, and so that's a fantastic little training tool. I think there's a couple of them on the market now, but uh, having that extra lens on the end of your optic to refocus at a very close range that's a very valuable indoor dry fire training tool. I'd recommend everybody have one of those. have to think about getting my finger square too. I, it doesn't naturally do that. I know a lot of people's does, but 
I have to have a little bit of pressure on it to get it actually straight. Have you been have, have you been working on your breathing at all? So, okay. so that's another thing I'm I, I never have conquered that. Okay, right. I see. It's there's a just looking at how your back is moving up and down. There's an inconsistency to the to the way that you're breathing. Right. It's not a nice gentle cycle. You'll breathe a lot and then not so much and then and then a lot and then right in anticipation of the shot, there's a hesitation. There's a there's a, a manipulation of it. Right. And so it's pretty important in order to find that inner voice, that that inner impulse that lets that round go, that you breathe naturally. Because if your breathing is being manipulated based on what you're thinking about doing in here we're talking about well i'm going to press the trigger pretty soon and then you immediately start breathing differently it's going to cause a natural point of aim shift in that rifle almost invariably it's going to cause a natural point of aim shift even if the reticle is directly over your point of aim and exactly where you want it to be at the time the shot breaks because your body position will be changed as a function of how much breath you have in you or the tension in your body or your diaphragm as a result of manipulating your breathing cycle, then your natural point of aim will be off. And when the recoil proofs your position, that's when you'll notice that something is different from the previous cycles. That's why it's so important to have your breath be natural However your body needs to breathe, you need to be breathing. You cannot be consciously thinking about changing your breathing. You just simply have to be aware of your breathing so that you can appropriately time the shot. And that timing, there's too much going on there for you to do it consciously. You have to turn this over to your subconscious. Now, repetition will allow you to do that, but you're going to have to have some very truthful, very pointed jousting sessions with yourself here right in order to try to you have to be able to diagnose that mechanism you've got to be able to try to figure it out get that line of communication open understand what it's supposed to feel like and and try to make that mechanism work because in our daily lives it just doesn't work very often we don't think about it however we do it Right. We get in our vehicle and we're driving 65 miles an hour down the highway and here comes another vehicle, 65 miles an hour the other way, 120 plus mile an hour closure there, right? right. And we're passing within six feet, eight feet of that vehicle and we're not even thinking about it. Right. It's just something that we do. Every day in our lives, we're doing things that are extraordinarily complex that we don't think about and we don't stress over. And so it's super important that you get that line of communication open so that you can, you can talk to it. You can make demands of it. You can say, hey, you, Mr. Subconscious Mind in there, this is the thing that I want to do now, and I, I demand that you do it. And so you, you just... There it is, the practical application of faith. If there is anything else, you just simply open that dialogue and, and make a demand of it. Say, this is, this is the thing that I'm planning to execute flawlessly. You need to make sure that I do it flawlessly. That's my expectation, and I won't accept anything less. Right. You lay there in that position. You have those jousting sessions for as long as it takes. When I was first developing these techniques, it was hours. Hours at a time before I'd fire a single honest shot. And without this impulse, you cannot fire an honest shot. You really can't. Right. You can shoot a whole bunch, and you can be a good shooter, but the greatness lies in the, the turning over of all of these variables, and there's too many of them, too subtle, too small, too nuanced for your conscious mind to control as quickly. Because you can only think about one thing at a time, essentially. Your, your conscious brain is really inefficient. Right. You can only think about one thing at a time. And even multitaskers, they're just good about switching what they're thinking about really quickly. But the subconscious is different. It can manage all kinds of super complex things all at the same time. And so when you're in that position, that 
leading with your breath, how we talked about in a previous episode, is that, that inner strength, that full control that you have, it gives you a knowledge of self. It gives you a, a power to do things without feeling the stress and, and the expectation and the anticipation of it all. You can just let it be. Just as any miraculous thing that you can watch sunrise, it's just there. Yeah. It's just there. And that's the goal here, is yeah. you get in behind your rifle, you let yourself go to that place. You rinse all of the other stuff away, and I know that's difficult when there's a thousand people watching this episode by the end of today, and, yeah. and there's, there's a lot going on in your mind, and then here we are kind of picking apart each individual aspect of things. But the first thing that has to happen in order for these sessions to have any value to you, Daniel, you have to embrace the fact that you need to come into a very confident, relaxed state, not be thinking about the things that you can't do or the things that you're uncomfortable with or the things that you're not good at and you wish you'd be better at. You have to just drop it all right where you stand. You've got to just put it all away and start from square one and say, well, there's no expectation for me to know this. The only person that's making that expectation is you. Right. So here I am saying, well, there is no expectation. You just perform the movements and then I will help identify some of the things that, well, if you uh, maybe thought about it this way, maybe it could change. If you start here, maybe you could move forward a little bit. But you can't leave any of the stuff behind. So the intention and deliberateness that you're moving today is a million times better than it was yesterday. Did you practice yeah. at all when we were offline? <laughs> yeah, I did. You did? <laughs> yeah, because I knew I was going to have to perform again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I knew I was going to be watching again, so I wanted it to be better today. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the motivator that everybody uses, right, is different. And your motivator was you didn't didn't want to look silly, you know, and, and, and you want to get better. I know you well enough to know that you, you want to embrace oh. stuff and want to be able to uh, perform it a little bit better. So yeah. we'll continue doing this. this these episodes, I've, I've received a whole bunch of feedback from people already saying that it's, just, it's really cool seeing it all come together. Good. So we'll continue Good. this. We've been talking this week about setting the right example. Um, Jesus used two very easily understandable uh, illustrations he described as salt of the earth and, and light of the world. When you have salt, if it doesn't give you any flavor, it's absolutely useless. If you have light and you hide it under, under a basket, it's absolutely useless. And he's describing how our lives in the same way, if we don't set the example at all times in every aspect of our life, then our lives as a Christian is absolutely useless as far as influencing others. Uh, Paul describes it in a different way too he says first Timothy 4 and verse 12 let no one despise you for your youth but set the believers an example in speech in conduct in love in faith and in purity so basically he tells them you set the right example it doesn't matter whether you're saying something or doing something in the way you treat others in the way you react with others it doesn't matter where you are day or night you set the right example we're only make a we will only make a difference as Christians if our example holds true day in and day out, whether we're at work, whether we're at home, whether we're around people we love or whether we're around people that hate us. Our example only has an effect on people if it holds true all the time. Thank you for joining us for Bullets from the Bible. We'll see you Monday. <laughs>